So I want to take a look at the gospel passage this morning, try to glean a little of what John is trying to tell us about Jesus and his mission. The passage starts with a group of Greeks questioning Philip. It says, now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. This incident doesn't appear in any of the other Gospels. Because the other Gospel writers weren't particularly interested in the Greeks. Their Gospels weren't written for a Greek audience. But John's Gospel was. John wanted to present Christianity to the Hellenistic mind. And so it makes sense that John would want to give the Greeks a cameo because he wants the Greeks reading this to know that they aren't the only Greeks interested in Jesus, that it's okay for them to wonder about Jesus. It's okay for them to follow Jesus because others uh, like them have. That's true for all of us, too, I think. We want people people we know, people like us, to know that it's okay to wonder about Jesus, to follow Jesus. Because we wonder about Jesus. We follow Jesus. We want them to know that Jesus has a word for them. That Jesus has something to do with their lives. He's not proprietary. We want them to know that too. He doesn't belong to the Western Church or the Eastern Church. He doesn't belong to the Catholic Church or the Protestant Church. In fact, Jesus doesn't belong to the church at all. We belong to Jesus. And we want everyone to belong to Jesus as well. So Jesus' answers to answer to Philip and Andrew is, I think, kind of strange, because he doesn't say, bring them to me, let me talk to them, see what they're all about. He says this, he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Jesus wants people to know. He wants the Greeks to know. He wants everyone else to know that if if we're going to follow Jesus, we need to understand that Jesus came with a new vision for life, a new view of life. Jesus saw life. He lived his life through the lens of a cross, through the lens of sacrifice. He taught us that it's only by death that we find life, the death to sin and the death to selfishness. Only by spending our lives for each other will we retain them. Only by serving God's purposes do we attain any measure of greatness. I think this is the most important theme in all of Jesus' message. Deny yourself in favor of others. Don't work for individual gain. Work for the common good. And then the mood shifts pretty dramatically. He, Jesus says... Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus didn't really want to go through with the plan. And not because he was afraid to die or he was too comfortable in this life. But to take on the sin of the world, that's a whole other thing. And he, he also had this same issue 
it at Gethsemane, right before he went on the cross. I think that Jesus was certain that carrying the weight of our sins while hanging on a cross would be excruciating. And he wanted, I think, to avoid it, if possible. But I also think he was certain that if he was obedient to the cross, something would happen that would break the power of evil once and for all and allow all people to come to know God personally through him. Now this is the judgment, now, now, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. So he gave in to the cross. He gave in to the plan, and not for his sake, but for our sake. Again, this theme of self-giving. And I think the tipping point was God speaking to him. God saying, Then the then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. But the voice that Jesus heard, the voice the crowd heard wasn't an echo of God's voice or someone else speaking for God. It was the actual voice of God. God spoke to Jesus at every great moment of his life, his baptism, his transfiguration, and at this moment, when he commits to the ordeal of the cross. That's true for us as well. If we're faithful, if we follow Jesus, God will speak to us. You know, the only reason God wouldn't speak to us, or or that we wouldn't think God was speaking to us, is that we don't like what we hear. Or maybe we're afraid of being wrong. Or maybe we don't think we can accomplish what we're being called to do. And so we think we can't hear God's voice. But we need to remember that in Christ, we are never alone. We We have each other. But most importantly, we have God, whose presence is always with us. And it's through the strength of God's presence, through the power of God's presence, that we are able to carry out God's plan, that Jesus was able to carry out God's plan. God's plan for our lives, God's plan for the life of the world, and God's plan for those who we care deeply about. Amen.